What's up, guys? Uh, today, the topic we're diving into is called hormesis. So, hormesis is the idea, in short, that a little bit of bad can be good, but a lot of it of bad is bad. So, what I mean by that is think about how we train. Well, if I'm uh, lifting weights, we cause some muscular damage, a little bit of bad, but that leads to some good because we have repair and adaptation. So, the hormesis idea is that a little bit of imposed stress causes a positive adaptation. A lot of bit of imposed stress, uncontrolled and maybe unregulated, causes some maladaptation. So the top, the reason why I bring this up is because essentially the question that was brought up was, you know, what, what does the research say on, uh, you know, antioxidant supplementation and when should I be using it and how should I be using it? Um, and you know, does it blunt my gains? And so first and foremost, we got to understand how this mechanism of adaptation works and so and why and how antioxidants play a role. In the body, we have mitochondria. Uh, mitochondria are the source of oxidative phosphorylation and you know, we typically have, it's also a lot more than just that too, but at long, long story short, we have these things called reactive oxygen species that come about from uh, the oxidative process where uh, these guys essentially are signaling molecules. So reactive oxygen species in the redox system go hand in hand. Your redox system is made up of things like superoxide dismutase, uh, catalase, glutathione, and you know things of that nature. And so the idea is that when we have a stress, the mitochondria releases these uh, reactive oxygen species, which then causes a reduction in our redox capacity. So those molecules that are important for keeping our mitochondria um, healthy and making sure that they don't get damaged from reactive oxygen species are stressed and maybe there's a little bit of stress and it causes a cascade of events which eventually leads to adaptation. Well, the issue is when we supplement with something like antioxidants, right? Antioxidants are re responsible for reducing some of these reactive oxygen species is that we no longer have the signaling of stress presence. So what I mean by that, there are a lot of studies looking at, you know, immediate supplementation, I think about one gram or I think it's one gram of vitamin C and about 500 milligrams of vitamin E. Uh, it's a Norwegian study. Um, they're looking at individuals, I think they're from 20 to 35. And they did uh, certain cardio training, um, cardiovascular training, aerobic training. And they had one group took the supplementation, the other group didn't. And the group that took the supplementation had a reduction in their, not a reduction, but a lack of adaptation compared to the other group in regards to their VO2 max. And so the proposed mechanism was that these antioxidants are actually causing, you know, they're, they're buffering up essentially your redox system, but at the same time, they are, you know, taking away the molecules that are causing the signaling pathway itself. So not actually allowing, allowing for the stress to occur. And so because the stress in the sense of, you know, the mitochondria and the oxidative burden stress isn't having that signaling cascade because the reactive oxygen species are being scavenged, they don't have the need to either, you know, build more robust mitochondria, build more mitochondria, or the mitochondrial biogenesis. There's no stress signaling there that require maybe the mitochondria to be more efficient or effective because essentially you're putting, um, you know, almost like a, uh, a splint on the situation because you're supporting it with uh, exogenous supplementation of um, antioxidants, but you're not necessarily allowing that signaling cascade to take place. And because of that, the group that took the supplementation that's why they didn't have the adaptations that you expected to see because it's essentially being burdened. Now, it doesn't mean any oxidants um, and supplementation is a bad thing, but it means maybe timing's an issue. Like when is that timing occurring? Is it occurring immediately after exercise? So it's blunting some of that cascading effect? Or do you want to postpone it till later, um, you know, in the post exercise? So it, it's more taking care of some of the uh, excessive, you know, uncontrolled metabolic damage you might have going on, assuming that your own uh, redox state isn't able to handle the, you know, handle the stressor that you imposed upon it itself. And so there becomes a timing aspect there, the quantity aspect as well. And obviously maybe if you did uh, blood work, you might have some deficiencies or some indications that you might need to be taking the supplementation in the first place. And that's obviously a good reason to do so as well. And so when you look at supplementation in general, right, it needs to be adaptogenic, needs to help adaptation, not <laughs> blood adaptation. You don't want to be imposing, um, you know, or superficially uh, inducing a gathering up of some of these reactive oxygen species because it's not forcing that signaling cascade that normally takes place. Um, and again, the, the, that concept is makes sense off the top of your head. You say, oh, well, these reactive oxygen species eventually can cause metopathy, so they basically can 
cause destruction of mitochondria. If it's excessive, it can cause reductions in redox signaling or redox capacity in your oxidative uh, your ability to handle oxidative burden, and they've suggested that redox capacity is, you know, related to the immune system, and possibly that's one of the reasons why you might get sick if you keep doing chronic, uh, high intensity exercise. It's kind of the, the sweet spot concept is where that comes from. Is where we do high, high intensity exercise over and over again. We constantly stress the mitochondria and it becomes uncoupled, and we have reactive oxygen species being produced, which causes a reduction in our redox system, and that causes a cascade of events, which reduces our ability to have proper immune function. Uh, maybe chronic or higher levels of IL-6, do some signaling pathways. That's the idea behind it. But again, that's an extreme situation. And so maybe supplementation of these um, antioxidants immediately post-workout at high, you know, you know, super physiological dosages are blunting some of those signaling pathways, which isn't allowing for that adaptation to occur. So again, like going back to hormesis, right, a little bit of bad can cause some good, right? A little bit of stress on the system. They've shown that when the redox system is stressed, it actually becomes more robust. If we have properly um, programmed training where we're doing, you know, the, whatever you know, aerobic capacity training you're doing and it's properly timed, that individual can actually build up and have a more resilient uh, redox system. They can have higher level of presence of, you know, more robust mitochondria, more mitochondria, uh, and given the ability to handle the more oxidative stress and burden. But if we stop that signaling, right, in the hormesis model, we don't allow that bad to occur. We don't have the adaptation. On the other end, if we allow too much bad to occur, well, then we cause maladaptation. So it's kind of finding that sweet spot that of, you know, stress to uh, response situation and the adaptive, quote unquote, capacity of that individual and what they can actually handle. So appreciate the question and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this and take care.